Hello, everybody. Let me give everybody a few minutes to get in because I somehow had a different system trying to run my computer. So hopefully you will catch up with me. And uh, oh, gives me a few minutes to clean off my desk. I'm so disappointed. It took a while for Mark and I figure, to figure out how do we stop the other one and how do we start this one. But finally, we figured it out. So I'll just straighten up here. I'm hoping people, oh, three people maybe are in. So we'll cross our fingers that the rest of you find me. And let me do something real quickly. Let me go and copy this and put it in our groups IO so that anyone going, where are you, can find me. Hi, Laura. I see that you found me, you smart girl. Okay. Very good. I have no idea how it whacked up this time. Here I am now. Really. <laughs> All right, so I put the notice on the group board, and uh, that hopefully will let people know. So I went to get on tonight, and um, it had the OBS system trying to open everything. And I don't know why, but it's not supposed to do that. So hello, Lars, you and me, we can, we can sit here and gossip. Let me see. <laughs> But anyway, hello. It is so good to see you. So I have been very busy. I'm quite proud of myself, I have to admit, because I knew that I wanted to get this done. And I did. Hi, Kathy Boyd. Welcome. I'm so glad you set your alarm. You're so cute. I love that, Laura. You're a sweetie. And I got some good pictures from Kathy, so Sunday I get to show them. But look what we're going to work on tonight. Isn't that exciting? And I've got my paints. And you know what? I forgot to get a paint tray. So I'm probably going to have to go and get that. While everybody is filing in, let me go get my little paint tray, okay? All right, I'll be right back. All right. This is exciting. I love when we love, love, love when we start a new project. So this is fun. There are my new paints. And uh, there she is. Hi, Rose, sweetie, Regal Rose. And right now your, your real name just flew out, but I know who you are. So while we're waiting for other people to come in, I'll go ahead and tell you how I start this. started this. Oh, and I am so sorry that when I, start, I set up the program correctly in my preview, but somehow it's set up to come up with a different kind of program. Hi. Uh-oh. It's almost 1 a.m. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Christine. It's all right. You catch me in the repeat because we're starting our first episode of the painting. And... Uh, I'm real curious for you to see if it's something you want to try. I am so excited. So, 1 a.m. Oh, well, you you watch it, and we're, I'm back on on Thursday evenings, and so we'll keep it going. All right. This is the first thing you do is you get your fabric that you're going to paint on and you wash it really well. Then you press it really well. And I'm going to tell you something else I did. 
I put fusible interfacing on the back because I kept thinking, ah, oh, I wish I could starch this. So I get a really pretty smooth finish. And so I said, no, I can't starch it, not to the top at least, because if I starch it, it'll prevent the paint from absorbing into the fibers. That's why you have to wash your fabric really good. If you have prepared for dye fabric, you don't have to wash it, okay? Because that's already ready to go. So what I did is I got out some nice medium light interfacing fusible. And first I ironed the fabric and I wanted it really smooth. So I took a spray bottle, sprayed on it, and just water, sprayed on it, and then pressed it. And boy, did it come out smooth. And so then I flipped it over. I put the fusible interfacing on the back. And be careful with this because you, you put your iron on the back to get it to tack into place. But you might want to do most of the ironing from the front because you don't want any little puckers or anything caught up in it. So then what I did, I did try to sneak this. Since it was a good weight fusible, I put a little, sprayed a little starch on it and pressed it. And because I, I'll show you the difference. If you see the back, there are a few little puckers and things that there's a pucker that I got in it. Now, if you come over to my house and you look at my quilt and you flip it over to see if the back of my quilt is pretty enough, I'm liable to step on your foot. So, because <laughs> that's not what I'm about. I am not about perfection. What I'm about is having fun and expressing yourself creatively. Life is short. There are so many things we have to do. And this is something we do from the heart. So once I got it all nicely pressed and put the interfacing on the back and a little bit of starch to make it nice and firm, then I went and found some polyester batting. And the thing I love about these kind of projects, I can use leftover batting from a different project. Deborah Dunnell, hi, sweetheart. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. And so then I just picked out some fabric left over from a backed quilt. I don't really care. Now, I was nice enough to put nice medium blue uh, thread in the bobbin so that would kind of blend in. And I may clean this up a little bit. But do you see all of this from the stopping and starting and the stopping and starting? I don't care because the front is what I'm excited about. All right. So now ooh, let me show you. Let me get all my pink stuff out of the way. I, I'm so I can't tell you how excited I am to do this. So what I did and pay attention to this. Take your notes because I got permission from a lovely man from England named John. And he is known as the gentleman. Whoops. Got to use my glasses. He, gentleman, craft, craftsman, I think, or the gentleman. Let me look it up real fast because I don't want to give you the wrong name. He's so nice. And luck, gentleman crafter. Okay. And he is lovely. All right, I'm going to actually cut and paste his site. Please, if you go to his site and you leave him a memo, would you please let him know that you found him from our site? And because I went to him, he puts out free patterns on Mondays for the mandala. And that's what this is. Mandala just means circle of life. And I, I, I contacted him because when people put out free patterns, 
It's free for you because it's like a reward for going to their site. But for me to sit here and hand you out free patterns from him, that's kind of, you know, not kosher. So what I did is I wrote him a note because I'm very respectful of the time and care people put into developing patterns. We're so lucky that there are so many generous people out there. And it's like, there's so much to see and do. You, you don't even have time for all of it. So I wrote him and told him that I was getting ready to do a, a quilted painted project. And I saw his mandalas and I thought, I couldn't draw anything as good as he's done. Can I use them with my group? Can I recommend them to your group? Is there anything you'd like me to say about your group? He did ask that if we do create paintings and stuff from his work, please send him pictures, let him know so he can see how it turns out. What a gracious man. So to get your mandala, I've got all kinds of his. I would like for you to go to the gentlemancrafter.com and type in under search. There's a little question kind of marked near the top. It's kind of hard to find. And click on that and type in Monday or Mandala Monday or Monday Mandalas. And there are so many to choose from. So I Got oh hi Miss Vicky so good to see you and I sure hope I said hi to everyone who's come in but he has got all these mandalas and you can pick out the one you want for free like there was this one I first thought I wanted because I love the acantha sleeve that he, and then the angles but then I saw this one and this one has such a pretty center I said oh 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 I want to do that one. So what I did is I brought, I saved it to a file that I knew where I could find it. Then I opened it, that J JPEG image. I opened it with my Windows Paint program. And oh, it's so good seeing you too, Miss Vicky. So good. And so, and hopefully you call you. But I climb them. I'm not as fast as I used to be, but I still climb them. So then if you open that JPEG with your paint program, you can try to enlarge it. There's a little thing on the side. You just have to play around with this. If you don't want to try to figure this out yourself, take it to a copy store and have them enlarge it, okay? Because I wanted it bigger than something that's just going to fit on a piece of paper. And so this one, I think this is a little over 12 inches. Let me see. Because I haven't decided what I want to do with it yet. Oh, it's not even 12 inches. It's about 11 inches. So, enlarge it to whatever size you want. And then, when I enlarged it, it was too big for a piece of paper. And I didn't know how to take pictures, move it around. and So, what I did is I printed out a couple copies. Mandalas thank goodness, are a rep repetitive design in a circle. So all I had to do was print out like three copies and then cut and piece them together once I matched them up. And you can see on the back, you know, I just cut and glued them together. And then I took them over here to my light board and I put it on top, which... There you go. See that? Now, let's say you don't have one of these cheapo light boards. Then tape it to your window at daytime when there's light behind it. Then tape your fabric on top of that and draw it from the light that comes through your window. Okay? You can do this. So, I did this. Then I put my white fabric on the top. And then I... You can either use a Sharpie ultra fine point or you can use an, um, a micron pen. And you might be surprised that I'm saying use a permanent pen 
But I wanted the outline to be nice and sharp. Because for me, Jody's here. Hi, Jody. Oh, a snow, cold and snowing Ohio. Oh, you lucky thing. So here, so you just place your fabric on top. And Jody, you might want to catch the beginning of this. I talk about pressing this after misting it with water, then putting some interfa fusible interfacing on the back. And then when you lay this on top of here, then, oh, another thing I did. You know where the center of this is, right there, right? So that's not a problem. What I did with this, I had it very well pressed. I folded it in half this way. I folded it in half again. With my finger, I pressed really hard in the center of the fabric so that I knew exact, exactly where the center was. Then I laid it here so I could center it. Then what I did is I used some of these flat pins because it's just easier. And I pinned it to the actual paper. One, two, three, four. In each corner. Gotcha? Now, if you do that, if you do that, um, if you do that and pin it, then it won't move. Because if you don't pin it, it's probably going to shift around. Okay? So, now I'll go ahead and turn that painful thing off and unplug that. But, boy, that hurts your eyes. One day, probably next year, I'm going to ask Santa for a light pad. One of those nice thin ones that are have gotten so much cheaper now. Thank goodness. When they first got really thin, they were oh, a couple hundred dollars. All right. So, like I say, I use a permanent pen. And I happen to use this one. I know that Sharpies tend to run just a little but that was fine with me because I wanted a definite line here. And I knew I would go over it with black thread. So I did it permanently. Now, <laughs> some people would say, but Deb, if you do it with chalk or a pencil, then if you don't sew directly on the line, people won't know. I like to make things hard for myself. What can I say? So I had to be really good at sewing on the line. Now, to sew on the line, I would put the stitch down to 1.6 stitch length, nice and short. And um, put, your, put your foot down on a higher speed and you just give a little bit of resistance while you're stitching and going around the circle, around the corner. I've got to tell you, I did this with my Juki upstairs, that new one I got, that D, DX7, D something seven. And what it does, and the reason I wanted that machine, is that the moment you stop sewing, it slightly lifts the presser foot. So I had needle on down position, right? So every time I stopped sewing, that needle was down. And then the presser foot would lift up a little bit, and I could turn it and keep sewing. What a dream. Oh, my gosh, what a dream. So I highly recommend it. It is It's in the less expensive machine models, the price range. And it's a Juki, which means they are workhorses. And I, I got that the presser foot automatic lift mainly to do thread painting. But, oh, my gosh, did it make this so much easier. Because I thought, oh, how am I going to get – this is all quilted. I left just a little bit to do because I wanted to show you. But I'm going to have to do it on my Elna because my Juki's upstairs. But, and like I told them, Jody, the back is real messy and I don't care. And if anybody comes to my house and insists on checking the back of my quilts to see if they're neat and tidy enough, I'm going to stomp on their foot. So, <laughs> I want you looking at the front, okay? <laughs> if I want you to look at the back, I'll ask you to. <laughs> you know what? I love being 65 because I'm not so 
polite anymore, you know? I tell it like it is. So now what I'm going to do is I've put the blue thread in the bottom because my backing put the blue thread. Um, also, I cut the backing and the, the batting bigger than the piece because as you quilt it, it will draw up. But then what I did, oh, I better pull you back down here. Hold on, guys. Okay, what I did then is I took safety pin. Whoops, not that, not that one. I took safety pins. I love the curved ones. I took safety pins. I made sure I should have done this on a table that I could use painter's tape or masking tape without hurting the finish. And then I should have taped this down. I have a couple little tiny puckers in the back. But if you take tape that down onto the bottom table, making sure it's really nice and straight, then you can lay the batting and the front on it. And starting near the middle, start base pen basting it. Starting in the middle, every across the width of your knuckles, okay? So that far apart. And you start in the middle to pin, making sure everything's smooth and pin all the way out. And then that way now you're ready to take this sandwich to the computer, to the sewing machine, and start sewing it. Now I have sewn everything here and a couple of times, of course, I would make a little mistake. Let me find my seam ripper down here. This is not my, oh, there's, there's my favorite one. Okay. Each place I've got one that's still sharp, so it's my favorite one. If upstairs it might be a dritz and who knows. But, okay. There are some places that I didn't stay on the line good. So if I came off the line like this and I knew that would bother me, then I came back over and sewed. And that way, then I can come here and just break cut the threads and pull them out. Because I've already replaced the sewing where it should be. I do not take this out while I'm sitting at the machine. Because that's something I can do later in the evening with my feet up in a comfortable chair. But see how now I can come back and kind of just pick it out best I can. Sometimes if you just break the front threads, you can come to the back and finish picking it out. But everywhere that I went out of the line, I would I came back and did the correct correct stitch, knowing I would come back later and pick them. Because I, I am kind of picky at that. And uh, now this stitch wasn't an incorrect stitch. You do know that you kind of start your first stitch just over the edge of the line. If you start it right in place. Okay. If you look at, I, I just, good job, Vicki. You got my attention. She wanted to know she went to the gentleman's page. So I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to do the best thing and I'm going to show you, sweetie, exactly how to do it. All right, let me find his page. This is the fun part about doing this live. I can answer your question. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is point the camera at the computer, and then you'll be able to see. So right now, I'm on the Gentleman Crafters page. Okay, I'm on his page. And... It's kind of tricky to find, but if you go, where is the search? Oops. Oh, here it is. The search is right. Oops. Let me make sure you can see it. Can you see this red? So click on that, because that's kind of like, it looks like a cue for question mark. That brings up a search line. So in this, I'm going to put... Mandala Monday, 
Okay, you can see I already did that earlier. It popped right up. Then I'm going to do a search. When you do a search on his site, then look what you find. You start finding all of his mandalas. Now, they might not all be on this page. But let's say, oh, I love that one with the tulips. So what you do is you come down here, and it should say a free design to download. So I'm going to see. Let me see. Whoops. Oops. It should have a place. Let me see. Not all of them are the same. Okay. So this one I clicked. I clicked on the image. When in doubt, click on the image. Now, here we go. Free design for you to print. Let's see. Okay, here we go. To doubt, you just, you click on the print. It takes you to this. You kind of look down, look down, look down. Right here it says to download, right click on the image below and choose save target as or save image as. So I'm going to right click on this. There's the save image screen. Click on save image. They will come up, and here are the other mandalas I've saved. So I'll just click Save. And I know that this is under, I made a folder called Art Quilt Thursday Paint. So that way, if you don't know where you're putting it, you'll, you'll have a hard time finding it. If you ever do, you can always go in and search. But you'd have to know what the name of the, of the design is. So I just click Save. And then that way... Let me keep on going while we're showing this. This is fun. So what I'll do, thank you, Vicki, for giving me a chance to show you this. Let's say we bring up this one. Whoops. Okay. Now, whoops. And you know what? Let me do one thing real quick. I dropped my glove on the floor. Okay. Let me try this a different way. I'm going to right-click on this. Then it says open with. I'm going to click paint. Okay, I'm hoping, am I showing you this? I just right click on the drawing, open with. It brings down this drop down menu, and I'm going to click on paint. When I bring it up in paint, then I can decide I want to make it better. And see how you magnify it. And, um, Try to magnify it, and you can even make it bigger. And then let me see if this will do this. I can't promise you this, but print preview. Okay, I want it even bigger. Let me see if it will allow to zoom it. Mm, no, that's not working. There is a way. Look in your computer, or else print this, take it to a business supply store, or any place you can get things printed. But let me see. Uh, it's just making it. Okay. So how did I do this today? Somewhere, somehow, maybe this was it. Yes, this was it. Okay. So what I did, whoops, let me close this back down. I went to this image button right up here this image and it says resize the moment i hovered over it it says resize so i'm going to click on that here i'm going to leave this box maintain aspect ratio i'm going to come here and i'm going to put in 125 okay and i'm going to take out those o's okay then both things went to 125% so now I'm going to hit OK. Look what I've got now. See how that? Now it fills up the whole page. When I go to click on File and Print, and I always do a Print Preview. Oh, it's not that much bigger, so let's go back, and we're going to make it bigger. So, okay, let me close this out. I'm going to go up to Image again. And I'm going to do 150% because I'm feeling bold. Okay, so now it went up to 150 and 150. I'll click on OK. Now let's see if 
print, print preview. It's still doing that. I don't know why. Hmm. Earlier today, I got it to work. But you know what? Honestly, I might have had to mess with it a little bit. I might have even had to save it into a different program. Um, whoops. Didn't mean to draw on it. Okay. Well, let me close this down. But I played with a couple things that already came on my computer. It might have been Print 3D. Um, let me see. Open with. May, it might have been Photos. It might have been Photos. So let me see. I'm not sure. But this is an edit button. I think it, yep, yeah, it could have been this one. Where see over here, it says reset. It says 18%. Now, I can try to do this. Yeah, this, you can just click this thing. Now, what I would do in here now is save a copy. See this right here? It says save a copy. So you could save a copy, name it. But what I would do first, because you know you're going to have to be able to fit it on a piece of paper, is move it so you've got a part of it. Okay? Then you save the copy. Then when you go back in to get that copy, you can print a couple of them. And since it's symmetrical because it's a mandala, you can print a couple and you'll have enough pages. You can cut and paste it together. So it was photos, not paint. Now, the neat thing about doing this is let's say you would like to try out different colors. Before you go to all the trouble, let me, whoops, let me do something. Open with paint. You could bring it up and you could try different colors. I clicked on red and now I'm going to click on a little dropper tool. and I'm going to make this, whoops, well, let me try a pencil tool with red. I have not done this. Oh, here's the brushes. Silly me. Brushes and red. And then I'll come in here. Now, let's say that's way too little. It'll take me forever. So I'm going to do marker. And then come into this space. Whoops. Well, I don't know how to stay in the lines. But you get my idea. And that way, and this is, should be on your computer. And go to the brushes. And you can make it smaller, large. Like, look at this calligraphy brush. So if you wanted to get in a very tiny place, you could. Like that. All right. So if, if you already, most of you probably know much more about how to work your computer than I do. I've never taken a lesson. I just kind of keep searching until I find what I think I want. And uh, which is why it takes me a long time. All right, so I'll close that out. But I'm hoping that little tutorial might have given you some ideas or a little bit of bravery to go try it yourself. But there. Now, and with his site, keep searching. Sometimes it'll bring up some other mandalas along the bottom search bar, and you can click, and then that'll take you on to another one. So find the ones you want. So... <laughs> Oh, that's great. Tim, hello, sweetie. You're cutting your squares for, oh, that's wonderful. You're making the lap size. Just what I did. Just what I did. All right. So now when you watch this again, you'll see, oh, I take you every single step of the way. So you don't have to worry about trying this. Oh, hi, Judy Smith. Thank you, sweetie. I kind of hunt and peck. So, you know, I wish I was an expert, but I'm not. <laughs> but I have fun, and that's the most important part. So now I've drawn this on here. Then I put a neutral blue in the bobbin. I put my thickest, I, a nice, it's not a super thick thread, but it's one of my nicer blacks that's a little thicker. See how, and if I had a good thread, I, I would probably enjoy using a hand quilted black thread in the machine. 
but I got a good quality that's just a little thicker uh, and nicer than my everyday piecing thread. So now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to bring you over here to the machine, and I'm going to show you how I stitch it. And I forgot to, I put my bobbin in, but I didn't put my top thread in. But, oh, you don't know how excited I am. I'm going to be going tonight until at least 8.45 because my machine opened wrong and I had to shut it down and do it again. So I was a little late getting here. But don't worry, if you can't stay, it will be up there. That's the wonderful thing is you can't get rid of me easily. I just... Keep hanging in there <laughs> so the video will remain after the live stream is done. Okay. And I love the live streams because, number one, I don't have to do editing. And, number two, I can answer your questions as we go. So, now I've got my black thread loaded. Most of these I have already done. I just noticed right now. Whoops. A couple of these, I haven't finished doing all these acanthus leaves, but most of this is done. All right. Now, and remember, when you pick out, when you want to do a painted quilt, and you pick out, oh, thank you, sweetie, Miss Vicky, and thank you, and when you pick out a design, Remember that every line you see, you have to quilt. And the reason you have to quilt that is because it, it, I used a double layer of polyester batting to give it a puffiness, which will make the painted surfaces really pop out at you. And it makes it more fun looking, whimsical, they like to say. And then also... It helps to keep the paints within their little boundaries. Now, I just set this machine on 1.4. And what I'm going to try to remember to do is to sew a little bit faster, but to put a little pressure on, put a little pressure so that I'm really sewing nice tiny stitches. And the reason I want to do this is because I don't want to have to sew everything twice, but I want it to be a definite quilted edge. I, I definitely want to see that thread. And that way I know if I see the thread, and if I can see the thread, then I know it'll show up nicely and it'll help keep the paint from running down the side. Now upstairs, I am going to put my needle down button on this, but upstairs my Juki will slightly lift that so it just makes it faster and easier. And then as soon as I start sewing, it will drop it back down again. Okay, boy, going around these corners, I'm not all, now I just went out of the line. That was kind of sloppy. So I'm just going to back it up, do it correctly, knowing I can come back later and take the extra stitches out. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut my thread. It's one of the reasons the back is a little messy because I do so much thread cutting because it is too frustrating for me to try not to break the thread. And so I'm a happier person. Now, see how when I speed it up, it makes it easier. So sometimes you think, oh, by, by sewing too quickly, well, you just, you might run the machine quicker, but you hold it, you, you move the fabric slower. But by running the machine, you get a smoother stitch because you get smaller stitches. Okay. All right, and I'm going to go up into that. Then I'll turn this, bring it back around. But do remember, when you pick your design, only pick the amount of lines that you really want to go in here. Whoops. And if I get off the line, 
If I get off the line, I just go back and, and make it right. All right. Now, so I've got that one. I'm going to go ahead while I've got you here. And I'm going to do this one. I left this one undone so I could show you this one. Let me get you in here a little closer. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let me get you a little closer. All right. So this is the one I'm going to do. And it has this little tiny like center of the flower here, I always start with that. I start on those little areas first. Once I get the little areas, it's much easier than to come straight off of that. And if you have, I'm going to be painting with fabric paint. Well, it's actually acrylic that I'm putting a liquid medium with, and it turns it into a fabric paint. And I got metallic paint, so I'm very excited. All right. So then I just come in here, remember to run the machine a little faster. It makes the stitches smoother for you. Just hold on to the fabric and move the fabric slowly. Okay, then I'm going to lift the needle up and come over to this line. This is a straight down a vertical line. Okay, ready? See, I've got the machine running pretty fast but I move the fabric slowly. And most people don't realize you can do that. That's how I do a lot of my thread painting. Okay. And just to remind you soon, I'm going to be selling this Elna because I got that new Chuki. So if anybody wants an Elna Quilter's Dream, let me know. I'll give you a good deal on it. Okay, so now I'm turning this back around. It's got the auto automatic thread threader and the um, automatic thread cutter, which is my favorite thing. I love the idea of getting a, um, a featherweight, but I didn't like the idea of giving up a thread cutter. Okay, let me see. Hold on. All right, so I'm going to come in around here, run it a little bit fast, but move it slow. Okay, then I love how the needle, you can do the needle down too, which is wonderful. Then you just slide around your sandwich. Okay, come to the tip. This one's got a sharp point on this sink, on this one. Then I get my hands and see how I'm wearing the gloves that you can use to do quilting with. with? Oh, I've seen some gorgeous mandalas done with thread painting, like on black. And then the beautiful threads get, fill in the design. Oh, okay. So now I'm just going to finish going around this little part. This little part and then do the straight lines and we're ready to move on to paint. Okay, look, so if, if you get out of place, just remember. And that's why I like to run the machine at a faster pace because this makes the stitches smaller and the stitches I have to tear out are usually the ones that I didn't run it fast enough. They're too big, which makes them easy to take out, but... They tend to want to jerk around a little bit. Where if I'm going faster, see how much smoother it is? All right. So now I finish that. I've done the outside of the leaf. I've done this little inside part. I've done the outside of the leaf. Now I'm going to come do the rest of the vertical lines. Just put, set it in place. And the nice thing about running the motor faster but moving the fabric slower is it, it, in effect, locks your stitches at the beginning and the end because you're not really moving yet. Here comes this one. Now, I can see right here that this wants to, it, if I'm not careful, that's going to pucker. So what I do for that is to kind of push the fabric back and hold it back. Sometimes I'll pull back a little like that. And then... Hopefully, if 
I was holding my mouth just right. It didn't pucker. Nope, it didn't. But you can see it wanted to. All right. So now, also, if you find the fabric wants to pucker, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the next one and sew it back the other way. And that way, you're kind of taking that fullness of that fabric and you're going opposite directions. And that should take care of it. Okay, so here go this line. There you go. All right. And now the last line. I like doing showing you this now. I've always thought it would be too boring, but I can give you some good hints and tri tricks that I have tried. All right. There we go. And then I just take and trim my threads. Now, one thing that I find a little hard when you're doing this is you crane your neck. Let me bring this back up so I can show you. You kind of crane your neck to get, to get your vision over the work. If this wasn't built into the table, if I had it sitting on top of my table... I would put two door stops under it. Have you ever tried to sew with your machine by putting door stops? You put them on the back of the machine so the machine tilts a little bit. That can save your neck because you're then you can keep your head straight and you're looking right at the angle you want. So just remember next time you go to a hardware store, pick up two little rubber door stops. I use them when I go to a retreat or something because I take my machine. I don't have it down in the table. I have it sitting on top. I pop the door stops under the other opposite side. It tilts it towards me and makes it so nice. So, okay. <clears throat> all right. So now it's all done. I can pull these off. This helps me. I have arthritis. This helps me keep from, you know, clenching and straining so hard really saves my sore hands. All right. I love giving hints and tips, so I'm, I'm glad you liked it too. All right. We have so many things we can learn from each other, and I think I'll use this as my first paint pot. I haven't even thought yet of, you know what I would do if I were you? See how I've got this kind of what I'm going to do, not with y'all here, but I'm going to take on the very outside edge and do a little light basting to keep it from puckering. Start in the middle, baste out that way, and use big stitches. Then come back, start here, and baste out that way. If I And if I baste out where I know there's going to be a seam allowance, then I don't even have to take it out later. But it bothers me having all this flumpy stuff around. Because you always have to make sure that there's no fabric underneath. All right. Now, if you're worried about what surface you're doing it on, then I would lay some craft paper or a drop cloth or something under it. But I'm really, I don't think I'm going to be using it that, um, that runny. I'm going to try to make it thicker. Let me see. Okay. Bring this in and tilt it down. All right. Now, so here this is. Isn't it pretty? Oh, gosh. Yeah, arthritis, it gets me. I'm very, very lucky. I have JRA, but it's been in remission. But um, like this finger, it's not quite straight anymore. But that's all right. They're here, and I still work them. And honestly, I'm a big believer in keeping them flexible. Okay. So, oh, there's another thing, too. If you later want to make your black lines even thicker, I think I might do this when I'm done because these are like markers, and you can come in. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? But I might do this at the end because in case some of the paint I got on, and these are better than Sharpies because they, they're they not supposed to run. So, 
All right. Here we go. Yeah, and that looks that looks really pretty. I still think I see a little bit of running, but not not too bad. I mean, not enough for you to really see. All right. Then I have a textile medium. Textile medium, fabric medium. Oh, wow. Oh, he must have rheumatoid. Yeah, I had the juvenile form that was really hard when I was young, but I'm so glad that it that it uh, went into remission. Um, I feel for your husband, hon. I feel for him. I'm sure that infusion really helps give him some comfort. This is a new one I bought off of Amazon. And my other one's getting right old. And I think I got this for about... Oh, no, 10 to $12, and it's 8 ounces. And I have not been wanting to go out shopping because even though I've had my booster and everything, I don't want to get this Omicron. All right. Oh, good. Okay, you were, you, oh, you were diagnosed with it, but you don't have it, so you're in remission too. I always wondered, my, when I was a teenager, my legs, my knees would swell up so much I couldn't bend my legs. And uh, made me not feel very good. All right. I Now, here are the paints. I got these paints. They're not fabric paints. They're just acrylic paints that I got off of Amazon. Well, Santa brought them to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're fade-resistant, quick-dry, metallic finish, non-toxic. Okay. So here are my colors. <sighs> the center, I think, will go. We'll go maybe with this. Hmm. Should we go for an orange? That might be good. I might not be using too much orange later. So now I have put 50% medium. Always shake your paints, especially with them being metallic, because sometimes the metallic dust can settle into the paint. All right. Oh, everything has a seal on the top, which is good. It keeps them from drying out, but, oh, these are hard to get up. All right, let me see. Now, if I was gonna not, if I was going to not use these very often, I would keep the seals on. In fact, maybe I'll do that. But I, I'm probably going to use them pretty fast. But now I'll put about fifty percent of this orange paint in with the fabric medium. All right. Now, let me get my paintbrush over here. All right. So I'm excited that I've got you a place to get free mandalas. And you don't have to have metallic paints. You can just go with your regular acrylic paints. And if you're on a budget, Michael's has the two ounce bottles of the textile medium for only two dollars and something a bottle. I just didn't want to go into the store, so and you can't buy two, a little small two ounce bottle. Oh, look at that! That is so pretty. I don't know if you can see the metallic aspect of it, but it is beautiful. So, okay. I'm going to put this right here. Now, remember that metallic, I mean, acrylic paint can be washed up before it dries. If you wait and it, let it dry, it's permanent. And I will be using a cover cloth with these. And with that cover cloth, I will be um, heat setting these paints. So after they're completely dry, I'll put a cover cloth and then press them with an iron. 
So, yeah, it is a ripe it, apricot. That was a great way to describe it. I'm using a very small paintbrush. And what you're going to want to do is apply your paint in the middle. I know we all want to always rush into the edge. But until you know the thickness of the paint, don't push it too close to the edge. We want to make sure that your paint doesn't run. Let me come in a little closer. Okay. We don't want the paint to run and bleed through. Now, by quilting it first, that will prevent some of the bleed through. So, But you see, I'm just taking my time. For one thing, this is going to be like Lisa Capen said when she has been doing her painting. It was something very relaxing. I can't wait to do hers, too. I've, I've been downloading the patterns and... But she gave me the idea. It was so peaceful to watch her. I thought, oh, that would be a fun way to start back up our art quilt Thursdays. But see, when I see that now it hasn't been running, it's been staying put, then now I can easily eat, kind of eat, gently sneak up on that edge. Gently sneak up on it and make sure. It's filled into all the little crevices, okay? And I hadn't even thought about what I'm going what colors I'm going to paint this with. So it's probably something I should think about. And I'm going to leave it not too thick. But make sure it's covered well. I'm going to find something to put the rest of that orange in. I didn't stop. I don't know where else I'm going to want. So I'm going to make sure I seal it up so it will last until the next time I paint. All right. So that's good. Let me turn off this overhead light so you get a chance to see it a little better. But it is a beautiful orangey. And the camera, it's looking a little orangey gold. But it truly is. Let me see if I can bring this light over. It's, it's a beautiful, nice apricot orange. Yeah, paint, I love to paint. And this is like paint by number. I mean, you don't have to get all worried and upset about it. So, now let me... I need to get some water in the cup so I can rinse my brushes. Never let your paint brushes dry out with acrylic paints in them because it will ruin them. Okay, sometimes with warm water and soap, you can try to offset that. Ask me how I know. <laughs> All right, I'm looking for what color to use next in that little ring. So let me pull back out. All right, I have orange and I want two colors, two colors to use here. So do y'all have any suggestions? Maybe a pink or purple. Or, now, blue and orange are opposites on the color wheel. Anyone? Yeah, creamsicle. Maybe I'll use a couple little two shades of purple. Let's try that. All right. So I'm going to try. This one is bluish purple. This one is purple. More of a reddish purple. Okay. Oh, there's even a plum purple. Which two of these would you like me to use? That box of paints I got off of Amazon. It was like $25, $29, and I think it's 20 colors. So you'll, you'll see it when you go in there to look for metallic. Which ones? Hi, Miss Jamie! I got so happy seeing you the other day. We have missed you, but I've been so proud of you. Maybe I will try 
What do you think of these two? <laughs> oh, with cantaloupe. Yes, yes. Cantaloupe's a hard word to, to, to do. Okay, this time I'm not going to use as much. I'm not going to make up so much so I don't have to store them all. Oh, a lime green. Mmm. That's a good idea. Maybe I can use... Huh, let me see. There's green. Oh, yellow green. Okay, maybe... What do you think of that? Is that too bright? Or what do you think? Which one would you have it? Would you... I'll go lime green and this one or lime green and this one. How about lime green and this one maybe? Yeah. I think that would be better. All right. I will then take. Oh, I got to open all these. Okay. And we, Miss Vicky, we said hi to Crystal. She's growing up so much. And oh, wait until Sunday. I've got some pictures of my grandson who's graduated from boot camp today, and I get to see him tomorrow. I'm so excited. And um, he ended up getting picked, chosen for presidential detail. And he graduated top of his class, and only two people out of the whole, oh gosh, I think she said there were seven battalions of 40 people. Only he and one other person were chosen for the presidential detail. So I'm so proud of him. I don't know what to do. Okay. So I'll show you pictures of my sweetie. I, I was nervous about him going in the Marines, but he really wanted to. And he, he, he's, for at least at first, wants to be a medic. But he did a beautiful job, and so I'm so proud of him. All right, but I'm so proud of him graduating at the top of his class. So, he did so well with his class that he's not going to just be a private. He's going to be a private first class, so that's exciting. And I, he is just the, the kindest, sweetest, most thoughtful young man. And very driven, so it's really nice. Okay, I've got two little brushes. I I think I'm going to get Mark to help me get the rest of these open before I keep working. But let me get the center little ring done. Maisie's barking. Oh, thank you. Maisie is barking because... I've got my daughter's dogs. I drove over 300 miles there and back to meet her off of Interstate 95 because they needed someone to take care of the dogs so they could go down to South, from Maryland, Eastern Shore, Maryland, all the way down to South Carolina to see him graduate from the Marines. So I, I was like, I'll meet you. I can meet you. So we've got two dogs here with us. I'll take pictures because um, I'll be taking them back to meet them probably tomorrow late. Well, this is where arthritis gives you a fit. It's like, that's too much work. At least put a tab on them. <laughs> All right, let me hurry up because some of y'all are probably starting to, droop, to doze off. So... Let me get going. Okay, here we go. Yeah, oh my gosh, these colors are so wonderful. Okay, let me squirt out some of this purple. There we go. Put the top back on this one. Then, and also make sure you shake your, yeah, it was a long drive, but it was worth it. It was like 151 miles each way. And uh, it was so great. I said, you know, she's on the Eastern Shore, Maryland, and so I don't get a chance to help her out as much as I do the daughter that lives near here. 
and it was my pleasure to do it. Mark's been wonderful. Having two big dogs in the house plus our three little dogs. It's a full house. <laughs> All right, so now I've got my paints. I've got the paint. And thank you for whoever suggested lime green. That was brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and very carefully, very carefully just dab, dab straight down. Because I don't want to run out of the little space. And until I know how the paint will do, I want to be... Oh, I was just doing it where you couldn't really see it. Hold on. Let me bring this back. And let me close in again. Whoops. I hate when I do that. Okay. Okay, good. Now I'm closed in back there. I am worried that this these paint brushes are going to roll off and mess up. So I'm going to move this over here. Now, let's see what the lime green will do. Put it right here beside the purple. And just dabbing carefully. You don't want the, the bristles to splay out too much. And don't worry if you cover up a little bit of the black thread. Because we have got these wonderful, they're called fabric markers, Marvi by Uchida, Uchida, but I got these also from um, Amazon because I haven't been, I haven't stepped inside of a store in two years. All right, so now that goes there. So every other one, I will do the lime green. And see, just be real careful and just keep the brush loaded and just dab, dab, dab. All right, so now I'll come back in. And you know what? Thank you for whoever suggested the lime green because the two colors of purple would not have stood out as much as I would have wanted. But this is going to work out beautifully. And if somehow you accidentally get some of the paint where you don't want, probably would be too hard to try to lift it off. So I would wait till the, like, let's say you got some on the orange. Wait till the orange is dry, then touch it up. Isn't it fun? When I was watching Lisa Capen from Lisa Capen Quilts, watching her paint, I just loved watching her. She paints beautifully. It's just something really restful. So, so, so having these small dots. And you know what I've just decided? I like this orange so much. I'm going to carefully dab it in these little tiny, these little tiny things here. Ah, oh, that's so cute. And if the marker or the thread shows through, because it's hard to make a little tiny, tiny microscopic circle. If it does, just put a little, when the paint dries, put another little dab on top. But you see how easy this is and what fun this is? I'm so glad. Betty Middleton, when we back when we were doing the mosaic koi pond, she painted hers, and she used metallic paint, and I was amazed at how pretty it was. So I kept that in my mind, and then I saw Lisa Capen painting fabric, and I was like, that's what we've got to do. So do you see this? Very, very simple, very, very easy, very relaxing. And what I probably would do knowing me, is I would come in and every other one put the purple in, so then I'm done with the purple paintbrush. And here we go. And like I said, I'm going to wait on the marker until I see how my painting goes. Because over here, I covered up part of the stitching line with the paint. So then I can, when this is dry, I'll come over it with the marker. Keep the brush loaded and just come in and dab right in the center. All right, so I'll put that brush in the water. Whoever was the person who suggested lime, thank you. 
This is absolutely precious. So it really shows up. In fact, how in the world will I choose the colors without your help? I know I want to use turquoises and pinks and, you know, I guess you, what do you call them? The royal colors? Um, I'm trying to remember. Jewel tones. I love jewel tones so much. But now I'll tell you the biggest secret. Because you're probably thinking, how long is this going to take? Well, I only started this at 1 o'clock today. So, it doesn't have to take too long. And what I did is I, I actually started at noon messing with picking out the mandala that I wanted. And then trying to size it. And so that's it so far. And it is loads of fun. I'm sorry that I've got some other things to do tonight. Like eat dinner and go to sleep. Because if not, oh my gosh, I would be just stuck on that. Isn't that cool looking? Isn't that awesome? So I'll have to do some figuring of. What I want to color, I might go upstairs and use that paint program on the computer and and try different color combinations. Um, but I've got to cover up this paint because I don't want to waste any of it. Isn't that exciting? So anyway, I hope you'll try it. But like I said, it took me, by the time I got the fabric and prepared the fabric and drew the design on, that took an hour. And then I worked three hours on the machine stitching the outline quilting. So that really wasn't that bad. And what a fun thing to do with the cold weather and the snowy weather. This would be a wonderful little, I'll show you up close one more time. That is fun. And now you know why I wanted to use puffy um, batting, two layers of the polyester, because I wanted everything to kind of sit up and sit proud. And then I'm probably going to use the paint thick enough that it's a little, you know, it creates that domed look. So what a fun start. What a fun start. So we'll, I will be back with this project next Thursday. And if I get any more done by Sunday, I will show you. But um, it's fun having you all kind of say, what about lime green? That's the fun part. All right. Um, and also to tell Miss Jody that I got my pattern drawn for my Alex Anderson um, hand embroidery. So I've got a cutout. I, instead of buying silk dupioni, I bought polyester dup dupioni because it's much cheaper. And, but I still want to try it. And I'm excited. And I've got an idea for how I want to do the circles that we put the embroidery on. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Now I'm hungry. Luckily, I made a chicken casserole the other day. And it's still upstairs. So I'm going to go and just Heat it up. Don't you just love microwave ovens? <laughs> but anyway, I had a whole lot of broccoli and cauliflower, and I thought, hmm, well, I've got a can of cream of chicken soup. I've got cheddar cheese, some eggs, a little bit of seasoned breadcrumbs. I can do a casserole. <laughs> so thank goodness for things like that. All right, guys, you're so much fun. It was so good to see you, Kim. You don't know how much it means to see you back, sweetheart. I will see you Thursday for my Art Quilt Thursday. Fabric painting fun. I mean, this, I'm so excited about it. And then I'll see you Sunday. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing for Sunday, but I'll come up with something. All right, take good care. Send me photos of your work, your snow whatever you'd like for me to show you on Sunday. Take good care. Happy 2022. Give a little thought to 
all of the security at the Capitol a year ago. That's been heavy on my mind today, but sometimes we need to do something. We, can, we can't change the world. So take good care, everyone. Have a great week. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye-bye, everyone. You are the best. And Jamie, oh, so good to see you again, sweetheart. Bye, Crystal. If she's not up this late, just tell her and you can show it to her. <laughs> you can show it to her later because that crystal is, she's something else. Love that girl. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Come on. If I can get my mouse to work.